when we look at the, at the trend and we look at 2030, which is the target of the SDGs, uh, our projections are showing that we will have 670 uh, million people chronically undernourished. It's exactly the same number that we have in 2015 when the SDGs were signed. The main causes of food insecurity are conflict, climate change and economic slowdowns and recession, and also COVID-19. According to the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, FAO, the war in Ukraine should also be seen in this context, the organization added. And that means the situation has worsened, the organization said, because Ukraine and the Russian Federation accounted for 30% of grain exports. More on this later. Recently, the International Organization for Migration, IOM, in Geneva, organized a roundtable discussion on the role of women and youth in the context of food insecurity. The Holy See participated in the discussion and called on those involved to take an ethical, intergenerational approach. Solidarity is not optional, but it is a fundamental issue of moral justice, the Holy See said. The Holy See's permanent representative to the UN in Geneva, Archbishop Fortunatus and Vachukwu, will join us now to talk about the causes of food insecurity and also, especially at Christmas time, about food waste. Now here at EWTN TV UN Block. Good afternoon. Recently, the International Organization for Migration, IOM, in Geneva, part of the United Nations system, had organized an international dialogue on migration. The Holy See, represented by His Excellency Archbishop Fortunatus and Vachukwu, participated and made its voice heard. I'm now connected with the Archbishop in Geneva. Good day, Excellency. Christian, good afternoon. You spoke on the panel, which was entitled The Role of Women and Youth in Mitigating the Impact of Climate Change Induced Food Insecurity on Migration and Displacement. Can you please explain to us what the Holy See's objectives are through its participation in this UN conference with this ambitious tongue twister title? Well, that's, you're correct, Chris, and that was. Um, really a mouthful of a theme, but it was talking about um, migration that is caused by food insecurity, which in turn is caused by climatic change. And what women and youth could do to mitigate such situations. Um, so the focus is actually on food insecurity caused by climatic change and how such food insecurity in turn causes migration. Of course, we know that climatic change affects um, farmlands, you, you speak of um, droughts, you speak of um, hurricanes, you speak of floods, you speak of um, changes, harsh temperature, harsh conditions that affect negatively agricultural production, which in turn um, have very adverse effect on food production. Now, when you have such um, situations and people do no longer have enough food to survive on, it is normal that such people begin to look for greener pastures uh, where to migrate to. Um, this is how food insecurity pushes migration flows. And um, in the same way, climatic change also pushes um, um, food insecurity. Now, we know uh, that um, migration has become, has always been actually a major issue in human um, life, in human history. Now, the Holy See participates in these conferences in order to 
help focus attention on the fact that the people migrating are human beings, human beings with human dignity and human rights, which we need to protect, which we need to respect. They are not just statistics, because quite often in dealing with migration flows, and not just with regard to um, asylum seekers or refugees, but general migration flows. The tendency is for countries, even in international um, dialogues, to focus on statistics and talk about numbers. So the Holy See is there to always underline that fact that the people that we are talking about, human beings with human dignity, and with human right. And one of those human rights is the right to decide to look for a better place to live better. Now, the people welcoming these people uh, that are migrating are often those that try to raise walls or try to justifiably maybe also establish conditions. So, that is why the Holy See is there to be that voice, because the Holy See, strictly speaking, does not have the other um, interests that most states have. The interest of the Holy See is that of keeping the focus on human life, human dignity, and common good. Excellency, we pray, give us this day our daily bread. Catechism 2831 reminds us that there are people who go hungry because they have no bread. The Catechism goes on to say that this petition cannot be separated from the parable of poor Lazarus, nor from the parable of the Last Judgment. Please explain to us the connection. Thank you, Christian, for bringing me to the Bible because, you know, I love talking about the Bible. The first thing I have to tell you is that every Christian should know that we are invited to be the image and likeness of God. This is what I call the code 126, that is Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. And God said, let us make man and woman in our image and likeness. So we are supposed to reflect God where we are. And that was the mistake of the rich man with regard to Lazarus in the parable we have in the gospel according to Luke chapter 16. You have to know, we have to remember that this is the only parable of Jesus where one of the actors is given a name. The rich man has no name, so he could just be any of us. So if we behave like that rich man, then we are that rich man who ignored the needy, the sick at his door, and dogs came and licked the wounds and cleaned the wounds of the poor Lazarus. Sometimes we are worse than dogs in our relationship to our neighbors in need. Now, the interesting thing is that the person that has a name in this parable is the poor Lazarus. And that is to teach us that however poor we may be, however miserable we may be, for God, we have an identity. We have a name. That man, that poor man, ignored, as it were, forgotten by the rich man, for God has a name. We should also remember that the people around us are human beings with names, with identity, with dignity that we should honor. And that is why we should turn attention towards them. And this is what brings us to the other text that you've mentioned, Matthew chapter 25, the last judgment. God himself is going to ask us, when did you behave like me? I was hungry. You did not give me to eat. I was thirsty. You did not give me to drink. 
but to those who recognize him in the needy, the poor, those who behave like him are the image of God and therefore give name, recognize the identity and the need of the needy around them, they are the people he is going to come, call to come and inherit eternal happiness. We should never forget that this life is not our only life. There is an afterlife and somebody is going to ask us, were you really my image? Did you do what I would have done in that situation? We have to think of the needy around us, especially try as much as possible to make sure that our brothers and sisters in need are not abandoned in their needs. I'm going to ask, how have I been the image and likeness of God? If God has been generous to you, if God has been generous to me, maybe I have a good job, I'm born into a wealthy family, I'm, I have been able to get a beautiful job, and I'm able to celebrate at Christmas. Well, God is also telling us that we are only administrators of the wealth, of the blessings we receive. We should also be expressions of God's blessing, God's extended hand to others, those who are less privileged, who are less fortunate than we are. Well, Christian, I'm sorry if this has been more of a homily, or, um, but you brought me to the Bible, so I have been um, moved to speak uh, like a person preaching from a pulpit. Excellency, I'm sure we all enjoy listening to your sermons. Well, according to a new United Nations report, there is backsliding globally in efforts to eliminate hunger, food insecurity and malnutrition by 2030. And since we are talking numbers, here are more numbers. According to the Welthungerhilfe, WHH, about 931 million tons of food are thrown away each year. At the same time, up to 828 million people in the world go hungry. 828 million people who go hungry. This is almost 10 times as many people as Germany has inhabitants. And on the subject of Germany in this context, according to the Welthungerhilfe, it is estimated that more than 11 million tons of food go waste in Germany every year. In Germany, approximately 78 kilograms of food end up in the garbage. This makes Germany the largest producer of food waste in Europe, followed by France and the United Kingdom. Excellency, and now Christmas. It's just around the corner. At Christmas, food waste reaches its peak, a celebration that actually encourages us, or rather prompts us, to do the opposite, doesn't it? Well, this is very sad. Um, these um, extraordinary figures of um, tons of food that is wasted. And Pope Francis uh, justly condemns, speaks of and condemns uh, what is called the throw-away culture. And this food waste is also um, an expression, not the only one, of that throw-away culture. Um, and the food waste is also a, an expression of selfishness. People don't think of their brothers and sisters who in some corner of the world are not even able to have a good meal, one good meal a day. And yet, we have to remember that abundance, having or living in abundance, does not permit us, does not justify our wasting food. I give you an example, I go back to the Bible. You know that Jesus was able himself to multiply bread 
and feed multitudes. Yet, Jesus, who was able to multiply bread, did not want to waste. I'd like to call you to read, for example, the text of the gospel according to John. John chapter 6, verse 12. After Jesus had fed the multitude, if he wanted, he could also multiply and feed as many more as he wanted. No. He said to his disciples, gather up everything that is left over so that nothing is wasted. I'm quoting the Bible. Gather everything that is left over, Jesus saying to his disciples, so that nothing is wasted. Every waste is an aberration. No Christian should allow himself or herself to be involved in food waste when we have so many brothers and sisters around the world who are in need of food. Somebody will ask me, but how can I get the food across to them? Well, we have various channels. Let me begin with the channel of the United Nations, the OCHA, Office for um, Humanitarian uh, uh, Affairs of the United Nations, will be ready to receive things and help you to distribute them to other areas of people who need, if you don't want to pass through religious means. But of course, if you turn to your church, even to your local church, even to your local pastor, even to your local parish priest, he is going to know how to help you get that food or at least turn it into money and get that little money across to missionaries in different parts of the world where people I cannot even reach so that some little child, some baby, some sick person may be able to have at least one good meal a day. Every waste of food is a grave sin when people are dying of hunger in our world. Finally, some good news about food. You must have heard it in the news regarding the export of Ukrainian grain. The situation had recently eased. The agreement on the safe export of Ukrainian grain across the Black Sea has been extended for another 120 days. This was announced by the United Nations a few weeks ago. The United Nations is also making effort to remove the remaining barriers to the export of food and fertilizer products from Russia. The agreement had been brokered by the United Nations and Turkey. The initiative demonstrates the importance of discrete diplomacy in the search for multilateral solutions, said UN Chief Antonio Guterres. Excellency, as this is our last interview for this year, could you please say a few words directly to our EWTN TV viewers and give us all your blessings? With pleasure, Christian. Thank you. We are at the doorsteps of Christmas. As I go into the city, I see that people are already even beginning to decorate um, the, uh, their doors, their shops with Christmas. Um, uh, decorations and as we do so we are also thinking of Christmas of course some people don't even ask themselves what we celebrate at Christmas that we celebrate God coming to us in the form of a child and when we think of God in the child the baby Jesus we remember that Jesus himself teaches that unless we become like babies, little children, we shall not inherit his kingdom. I like to be very precise. We need to go back and read the gospel according to Matthew chapter 18, verse 3. To be like little children to inherit the kingdom. When we look at the child Jesus, 
the infant Jesus, let us remember that we are called to be like children, like newborn babies. That is where we all meet. Because all of us, every human being, whatever be your color, white, if there's anything like white color, fair complexioned, dark skinned, fair skinned, yellow skinned, red skinned, whatever we are, we always begin as infant, newborn. And that's how Jesus wants us to be. He wants us to remember. And what are the common qualities of every newborn? Every newborn is born naked. Whether you are born to a king or a queen or the biggest leader in the world, you are born naked. And you are born fragile. So let us remember that at that level, we are all the same. And that we need to remember that. And this is something I find very interesting, that it is not only the church that talks about this common element, this equality that we all have. Even the post-war international community in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, we remember, 1948, adopted by the uh, General Assembly of the United Nations, begins by saying all human, all human beings are born equal, equal in dignity. So let us remember that. And if we remember that we are all equal, we are born naked, we are born fragile, we are born little, then let us also think of the fact that we should extend our hands to all the people that are naked, to all the people that are little, to all the people that are fragile. We remember we are all brothers and sisters in this one family, our planet Earth. Let us follow Pope Francis in preaching and observing human fraternity for holistic human development, for peace, for harmony, and for happiness, for the good of all of us, brothers and sisters, on this journey, in this life. With this message, I wish to impart on all of you and all your loved ones the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Happy Christmas. Happy New Year. In September, in September, on the occasion of the International Food Loss and Waste Awareness Day, Pope Francis said that these are what he called truly miserable events, because they divide humanity between those who have too much and those who lack the necessities. Because they reinforce inequalities, create injustice and deny the poor what they need to live in dignity. To throw away food is to throw away people, said Pope Francis. We here at the EWTN TV UN Block editorial and production team wish you all a blessed Christmas and also a blessed New Year. Thank you so much for watching.